my devices. Mouse. Move that stuff away. Yeah. So uh, tell me how you guys are doing. Hello, Jesse, uh, MC, Sasso. How you guys doing? Where are you guys from? I'm hailing from Denver, Colorado. And guess what? It's snowing today, which is pretty awesome. Really appropriate. Listening to some some nice holiday music and uh we're gonna get to some designing right i'm gonna make this really easy for you desi how are you doing where are you from desi rap nation i'm curious scott kane wonder where you're from as well ryan jesse bradley good to see you guys here so uh yeah we'll have people trickle in uh i'm gonna be using photoshop and illustrator you can see photoshop right here and then what's behind it illustrator as well so we'll be designing a, a holiday card, and really I'm just going to show you where you can get a lot of free assets as well, and then how to customize though. Slovenia in the house, Brazil, Slovakia, oh, love, love, uh, love Slo Slovakia, Slovenia as well. Uh, France, Serbia, I've not been to Serbia. Um, Australia, it's not snowing, it's, it's, Helen, are you making fun of me? It's not snowing in California, lucky you. <laughs> Hopefully the audio is okay. Thank you, New York City. Ah, is the place to be this time of year as well, uh, just because it's pretty around uh, Christmas time and the holidays. So Romania is in the house. Fantastic, guys. So uh, let's get this party started, as it says, right? But in general, we're going to be designing a holiday card, as you can see here, Washington State, Malaysia. Awesome. Orlando. It's probably not snowing in Orlando, is it? Or Algeria. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it does snow in Algeria. All right. India in the house. Cool, guys. Well, this is all about you guys. So uh, I'm always interested in where people are from. And that's what's cool. Absolutely love Montreal. One of my favorite places. Fantastic. Especially in the summertime. All right. So let's get to designing, guys. Okay. So Kehan, David, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but... Uh, with Illustrator CC and Photoshop CC. Hello, Mike. Uh, when you get a file new, you get... Uh, you get these different templates. So check this out. From mobile to web, okay? To print, film, and video. But this is pretty cool, guys. The fact that I can jump in here, if I'm, say, designing a website, I can take a look at this uh, line art icon set. But really, I'm gonna take a look at art and illustration. So I encourage you guys to check this out. This is all free stuff, free templates in Illustrator and Photoshop. And I was kind of perusing through this. There's more than meets the eye with these, because I'm gonna select this uh, Anank, Anank scene. Actually, no, this one, Depth Series, this is what I want. Check this out. There's like multiple illustrations in here. So I encourage you to check this out. Uh, just update uh, Illustrator CC, and obviously you have access to those illustrations, right? So I'm like, this is good. This gives me a starting point. Because I, I know you guys as designers, right, David and Daniel? Like, as, as soon as your family and relatives find out that you're a designer, you have to... You're the one designing the cards and wedding invitations and all of that stuff. And uh, therefore, that's why I'm showing you these free things. So that's what I've actually done here is actually use this, added some type in, as you can see here. It says, join the party animals. This text right here happens to be, uh, ha happens to be editable, right? So I could select this te text. Parte, capitalize A Y, Parte animals, and that's just 3D text in Illustrator. How did I make that? Just by going up to Effect, 3D extrude and bevel. Makes sense. Ignacio, Ignacio, how you doing? From Argentina. Good to see ya. <laughs> Cedric, so you know what I'm talking about? Wedding invitations. And on that note, there are actually wedding invitations in here. So. Jumping in here, if I go to, well, actually, here it is. Go into print, wedding invitation set, boom. 
right? So there you are. I'm, you know, what do we do? Merry, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Kwanzaa, guys, whatever, Hanukkah. Okay. Obviously, all of this is editable. Uh, you guys are probably laughing at my font at this point, right? I'd probably change this font. So if I select this text right here, again, don't, let's not freak out over the text. I get it. There's plenty of different holidays out there. Um, but I could use Typekit. So I've actually pulled down fonts from Typekit to use. And these are free fonts. Okay, for a time like this, what I'd use are the decorative fonts fonts. So I'd go in here and peruse these different decorative fonts. Go to the second page. Ah, next page. Let's grab, let's grab this one, Adored and Smooth, right? So again, I have access to those fonts through Typekit, right? And I can start to sync this one right here. Ooh, look at that. Realigned. Oh, wait. Adored and smooth is what it is. So that's where you find fonts, guys. Jump back out there. Illustrator, where are you? There you are, my, there you are, my friend. Okay, Desi, Desi Rap Nation. Uh, how do you make 3D text there? Super easy, by the way. So... I'll actually do that with this text, but before I do that, I'm going to change the font. So, ad what have I, whatever, Adorn, Adorn S engraved, that's the one I picked. I could switch to it. I could choose, look at all of my Typekit fonts in here, right? So I can roll on through, pick a font that I like. I want to show you right in here, this is brand new. If I select this Y, there's additional glyphs with uh, in Illustrator. So I could select the Y that has that curl that kicks that out more. This E, there's kind of a drop E that I can do. How does this C look? C looks pretty good. Oh, we got a, we got a singer here, people. Hello, music, change it. Waltz of the flowers. Right, you guys get the idea, but it's cool that I can come in here and access different glyphs just by rolling over that letter right down here. Boom, added it, can make it look pretty and you're well on your way. All right, so, um, you know, again, don't, uh, I don't want to get it all twisted. I don't want anybody to get offended that I typed in Merry Christmas. It's just Happy New Year. Change the font. We'll just pick this one. It's just kind of a fat font. And just to answer your question, Desi Rap Nation, I <laughs> love it. I want to make something 3D. Let's go into that again. Effect 3D Extrude and Bevel. Okay, there it is. Just don't forget to turn on Preview right there, and there it is, right? And now I can just rotate this little block uh, to get it to you know the angle that I want it to be in. Okay, so there's that. Click OK. Guess what? We could always change the color of the text. Easy enough to something else. You guys get the idea. All right, so again, just answering your question. Obviously, this design needs work, but now you know. Synapse in the house, buddy. Hey, T. White, good to see you, buddy. Nice. Um, yeah, I might try to even try to stump T. White with some things, <laughs> but anyways. Uh, so this is really cool, guys. What am I doing? I'm actually accessing uh, templates from Illustrator from Photoshop as well, so I can jump in and do that. Okay, let me do that over here. Photoshop, file, new. You'll notice the same thing. The reason I point this out uh, is that, uh, again, there's more that meets the eye, and I think anybody who wants to say learn to, to how to create a website in Photoshop, for instance, if you want to, this is how you do it, is you download this, and this shows me. This one has two different artboards and it will walk you through or kind of shows you how you'd set up a site. So I think it's a great place to learn. So, got it, got it. Photo, let's take this one. Oh, here's another nice one. Again, now I'm in Photoshop. 
selecting open. This is one I already have. You can see these different geometric shapes. More that meets the eye here. Kind of like this one, it actually looks like a present. So I can still use this template and start to uh, make a design with it. So let's get, grab a little red, come in here, boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, oh yes. How are you guys doing? I'm checking out the chat. Let's duplicate this layer. If you do a command T, Terry White, you might know this. Synapse, do you know this? If you do a command T and then if you right click uh, when you're in that transform mode, you can access sort of your flip horizontal. Okay, I like doing that because it's so much faster than going from here, clear down here, clear over to here. Okay, saving time, right? There's our fancy present. Let's merge those, oops, merge those two layers. <clears throat> uh, so, Imam, uh, ma again, make sure you you have uh, Photoshop updated. So you can go into apps, and um, it sounds like you did, but just make sure this this says open and uh, doesn't say update. Obviously, if it's going to say update, you need to update. If it doesn't appear there, then I don't know. Like, let me know, and uh, we'll figure this out. All right, so all those templates are free to you now. You got it right, Alexandru. There are more things as well. So there are free templates. There's templates you can buy. There are images you can buy because at this point I want to get like a an image. So directly from within Photoshop or Illustrator, I could do a search on Adobe Stock. So I can type in R-E-I-N-D-E-R, reindeer, photos, beautiful, Look at this guy, right? So directly from within uh, good old, um, let's grab this guy. Photoshop, I can sync that to my desktop. Cool. Or excuse me, syncing it right there. Boom, there it is. It appears in my Creative Cloud library and I can drop it in and start to use this. Right? Yes, in case you're making a invitation for like a cycle through, that's pretty good. Yeah, let's go with screen. But uh, again, just kind of working out some of this, this artwork all from that template. All this, Angelo, all this comes with the new updates. So there's more things here too, by the way. Um, let's kind of click over to, since this is like a holiday card, maybe it's for a fundraiser. Um, so again, what I'm actually building out, this is my little joke. Maybe you guys don't think it's funny. I think it's funny. The seventh annual Coats for Animals fundraiser. Because you know what? Animals need coats, don't they? They need, they need coats. It's cold out there. What about that reindeer? Right? Uh, I do this jokingly, but just to also show you, um, you have additional features. In fact, let me turn down this music a little bit. Oh, I missed the middle on that left line, David. Um, okay, that's, oh, I did. Like, you're talking right there? Oh yeah, hmm, interesting. Maybe that's what you're talking about. Um, but anyways, when it comes to text, again, if we're talking about updates, this is done the same way. I could jump in and have access to those same um, uh, sort of features. So if I select that A, I have that same ability, add that curl, you get the idea. That one's not that fancy. Let's check out the T. Dazzle me with a T. There we are, right? Dazzle me with an L. There we are, okay? Ch check this out in the properties panel. This is like... Again, getting to be a first-class citizen. So I just keep this up, and anytime I want to access different properties for this, I can click Advanced. It'll open up Character and Paragraph. Okay. Another thing I could do, guys, this is uh, this is this is cool too. I could actually just click to commit text, which sounds something small, but it's like I can you believe we ha 
it was a pain before. But if I click, it'll actually commit that text and I'm good to go there. All right, okay, let's move on. All right, Coats for Animals fundraiser, yes. We gotta get, that actually is kind of true if you, if you take a, an animal from a warm weather animal, and put them in Canada, you're probably gonna need a coat. Um, Adobe Stock, okay, so I've searched on Adobe Stock right in here, so reindeer. View details on the web. Sorry, I gotta change this song. Um, Adobe Stock, just so you guys know, that's actually where all of the, let's do holidays. You can see, um, obviously I can filter and find, say just vector assets, right? So I can hit update. Okay, notice how there's templates and then there's even 3D. But I encourage you to check this out, guys, because I've actually just like, look at this. For instance, look at this. I don't know what this is, but look, we have, I don't even know, this is in German, but look at all of these different icons, maybe for different holidays around the world. But for one credit, I can get all of those. So again, it's done the same way. This design, for instance, I could save a preview or even license it, and that's gonna be available to me anywhere. Let me switch over, and I don't mean to ignore the chat. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> Deb, you're funny. Reindeers need raincoats. Mm, puns. <laughs> That's fun. All right, seventh annual coats for animals. Cool. We have our reindeer. Okay. We could see our deer here as well. We could access those assets in Illustrator, right? You can see them right here. Okay, so I can start using them. Um, yeah, Michael, Michael, what's up, buddy? Yes, yeah, so I was at the <coughs> Creative Cloud user group last night. Meet up there, uh, so it was good. Uh, good seeing you. So, so yeah, you could do everything yourself. I actually use. I'll show you what I've been doing. By the way, is I'll I'll just buy like one image, that has a ton of graphics. For instance, this one. There's 320 icons for one credit. Okay, there's 320 holiday icons that I could use. So I've really been able to exploit this, even in the case of. This vector collection right here is what I've purchased. Okay, so what I can do here, this is fantastic. Rather than having to create all this stuff, perfect. I could take this, um, create a new invite. This is my custom um, sort of blank template. That's seven inches by five inches because that's what I wanted for a holiday card. And there we have that. So again, sort of stealing from here, starting a new design right in here with these assets. So yeah, I do, I agree with you. I, I like doing things myself, but uh, it's much easier just kind of like getting one uh, sort of credit. Show you one other thing in Illustrator, whether you guys know this or not, if I go down into the symbol libraries, here's a bunch of free uh, graphics as well. Okay, so symbol libraries. You don't want to use Adobe Stock? Fantastic. That's fine. Guess what? We want some flowers. Sure, let's grab some flowers. And there you have that as I start to create, you know, a pretty design. Make it pretty. Right? Oh, you like the low... Uh, Cedric, you like the low poly tree? Yeah. Do you see that? That actually is pretty cool. Um, let's go beyond that, because I could take these assets, by the way, and this is what I've done, is I'll just start dropping them into my library. So here's a flower, boom. This branch, dropping in there, boom, right? And I can start using that everywhere. 
Uh, yes, Ferris, you will be arrested for stealing assets. <laughs> no. I think of it more of, like, as a designer, I'm like, if I was creating these graphics, it's like, I would want to be paid for the hard work I do, so. Yeah, and these are all free, so there's no such thing as stealing when it comes to these symbol libraries, okay? One more thing, since you guys are joining me on the stream, I will show this to you, and I'm not saying, I'm not sure how long this is going to last, but this is like a pro tip. If you go into assets, into market, uh, you have market assets. So these are actually free as well, okay? So you can see this candle. I could sync that to holiday campaign as well. So these are free assets, if you're a Creative Cloud member, uh, that you can use. Not sure how much longer this is going to be out there, guys. That's all I'm saying. But there, that, there's that candle that's being synced right now. Hello from Switzerland. I wonder what time it is there. Rudolf Reck, uh, awesome name, by the way. Very appropriate this time of year. Very cool. Yes, Cedric, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to do what Cedric just said, by the way. So here's this asset. If I created something in Illustrator... If I copy it and then I go into Photoshop and I paste it, I can paste it as a smart object. And this is what he's talking about. Save it to my current library. That's fantastic. Boom, flower, done. Here is that asset right in my library. Right, actually I have it a couple times, but you get the idea, okay? Uh, oh yeah, do you want me to, do, okay, so let's do the deer that I, that I kind of showed. And I kind of have it put together already, but just so you know how I did put this together, is this was basically done by taking one Adobe Stock asset, it was a total win, right? That one that I just showed you earlier, maybe a couple actually, because I got some presents, and then I got a lot of these vines. And then I would just drop these vines in here. All right, and I'd start to use them. Now let's just turn off a couple things. You know. Make this a little more simple. Just so you can kind of get a sneak peek. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. So this is uh, how it is made. I just turn on that deer and start dropping the graphics into place. So let's just take this and take the opacity down to 50. Oh, it's locked, no wonder. Unlock it, five. 50% taking this, holding down to command and uh, clicking will allow me to just select that uh, item, that layer, and then I'll position it over here, all right? But notice how I uh, might not have been able to get it perfectly in there and I might need this to kind of wrap around a little more. So what I would actually use is I'd use Puppet Warp. It's right here, so edit Puppet Warp. Okay, so what that gives me is it gives me this netting. Do you guys see that? And let's just turn off that background. Puppet warp. I could start adding pins in here. And this is why I used Photoshop. And then I could bend that around so it kind of fits within that little area that I wanted it to fit into, kind of like that. All right. So puppet warp was just like a little... Again, just a little pro tip for you guys. And this sort of thing, I can't do that easily in Illustrator, which is why I've used Photoshop. Hey, guess what's amazing about this, guys? Angelo and Cedric. Um, what's really cool about this is all of these assets right in here, they're all vector-based, right? So I can click right here. Oh, this present, by the way, holding down the command key, guys. Let me zoom in up here. Hold down the command key and you can turn on auto select temporarily. So I turn on auto select, I click. Oh, thank you for selecting that layer. Okay, click. And guess what? This present 
double click happens to be a vector file, right? So you could say that even though I'm in Photoshop, this is resolution independent because everything's based on these vector graphics. Yeah, buddy. Michael, you're right. Puppet Warp rocks. Puppet Tools, heart. Yeah, Puppet Warp, man. I tell you what. That's uh, that's kind of how I threw this together. Was just bending and warping this, all these different items so they fit together like a big puzzle. Right? And that's what I wanted to do. I still might have some overlapping, but I think it's looking pretty good. Okay. Um... So from there, we can add some more layers, by the way. Again, Puppet Warp is what I was using. Allows you to sort of bend shapes. Hopefully that makes sense. And by the way, let me just point out, say for instance, this bow right here. Since this is a smart object and I've applied Puppet Warp to it, I still can access or turn off Puppet Warp as well. So that was the original bow and then I've warped it, okay? So again, if I double click on it, I can come in here. I always have the capability of like jumping in and editing this to make it maybe look more like the nose, okay? Because that's a smart object and we're using Puppet Warp for it. Done and done pretty easily. Looks good. Boop. Arnold, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Yeah, Command plus kick, click is a temporary select. That'll save your life, man. It's so helpful. Can I show you something else that has really helped me, by the way, in Photoshop as I start to turn on these layers? I'm building out this design. Uh, turn on, uh, color. Right, so I've actually added a, a whole other set underneath, right? But I just made those gray. And then I've added some, <laughs> um, no, that really doesn't even have any layer modes to it. Turning this on. Adding the deer on top. And I said, hey, dear, you know what? You're going to be a clipping mask. So, dear, you're only going to appear on top of those presents and nowhere else. So that's all of that. So, uh, Valeria, can you transfer the entire design made in Photoshop and open and save as vector using Illustrator? Uh, you can't really... I can't, the answer is no, <laughs> Valeria. <laughs> Sorry, the answer is no. I will say that if I want to export out any one of these elements, I could take this, you know, this flower and export it out as a uh, SVG, right? I could do that, and I would just do that for every single layer, and then you do File, Generate, Image Assets, will gemmer generate that image asset. So that's, that's how that works. But I'd say this deer looks pretty good. It even looks really good in that sort of close-up mode. But let me show you some other th quick things. Uh, adding a background that is also from Adobe Stock. Just some nice snowflakes. Icarus. Uh, Creative Studio, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to go for about uh, maybe 10 more minutes. But uh, again, I've just added that background back there. That came from Adobe Stock. Okay. I have added in some type. And, uh... Ooh! Mike Hanton. I am so excited to show you clipping masks. Um, okay, so maybe 60% of you know uh, clipping masks. And quite frankly, hold on, let's check this. I might, my voice might get a little loud. Let's adjust this. There we go. Um, check, check, check. 
cool. All right. All right, Clipping Mask are going to save your life, guys. Check this out. This is so awesome. I'm glad you guys are talking to me. I, I need to know. I need to, I need to know if you know this or not. <laughs> okay, so this is a really huge file. <laughs> so everything's a little slow. Let's release Clipping Mask. So here's the deer. This is what the deer looks like normally, okay? And I'm like, hey, deer. I want you to only appear uh, where the graphics are. That's where I want you to appear, dear. Just inside of those graphics, okay? So, all of those graphics are in this folder called ornaments, okay? So, I just make sure my layer is the layer above, and then I'll right click, and I'll say create clipping mask. Pop. Wait for it, wait for it. There it is. So now you can see that deer is only inside of where all those graphics are. <clears throat> Excuse me. Daniel. So again, this looks pretty cool. And I said, okay, let's take this to the next level by just changing the layer mode. So I said, okay, well, let's change this to overlay. And that's going to interact with colors behind it. We'll see it in a second. I have too many files open. <laughs> I got to have patience. Patience. So that's what overlay looks like in this case. It should make it darker and brighter. See how we have this like sort of like hairs. That looks pretty good. I can do a shift option plus and minus, but I'll just kind of start toggling through these different modes to find something that I like. Okay, so there's vivid light. All right. Pretty straightforward. Guys, I'm not I'm not that impressed with the presence. I think I want to remove the presence. Um, but uh, again, I'm still working on this, which is why I'm glad you guys are here. Okay, cool. Lucia, you got to go. Uh, I don't know if you're from Italy or where you're from, but thanks for joining me today. Um, yeah, so layer effects do a lot of things. Next question that I'm gonna anticipate you guys asking is how did you cut out, how did you cut out the deer? That looks so dope. Isn't it cool, guys? Don't you just love life? So cutting out this deer, right? You think I'm gonna take the, uh, what, the uh, lasso tool and like spend my time going like this? No, in fact, let me switch to this deer okay this is the original image i want to cut him out okay but really just the top part how do i do that with that layer selected you ready for this glenn i don't know if you know about this but if i go to select and then focus area it's just gonna select the focus area <laughs> oh eugene thanks for asking <laughs> let me let me tell you how i cut out the deer <laughs> i'm not even touching anything right hands this is like hands free mode and you can see, boom, it selects the deer, right? And it might have missed some parts, no problem. I can easily go in and add to it. Like that. But I literally selected the focus range. And what it did is it automatically selected the deer. You're welcome, that's amazing. All right, so done, done and done. I would typically use quick select, by the way. Mike Hanton, I would typically use quick, click, quick select. Um, and then I said, hey, you know what? And the, at the end of the day, I just want you to output this to a new layer with a layer mask. I'm like, cool. Click. Boom. Done. Right? So now he's extracted, as you can see, with that layer mask. Right? Isn't that cool? I'm so glad to hear that you guys like this. Because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to cut out the deer, and then I wanted to put some text, right? I wanted to put some text kind of behind the deer, but in front of um, the background, all right? So that's why I create this, what I call a, like a layer sandwich. I just move this O oh deer in between those two layers, and now obviously we have, you know, that looking good. And 
I'm just full of puns today, huh? Puns for days. Oh dear, it's the holidays again. The anti-holiday card. The non-holiday card. Let me show you something else, Evelyn. Check this out. Looks kind of plain and boring. I can go through and play with hue and saturation, blah, 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 all this stuff. But really, I'm just like, make it look cool. And this is what I think is like <laughs> what I mean when I say make it look cool. I'm going to make a create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to use a color lookup. Okay, Valeria, check this out. Color lookup, selecting that. It's going to create this lookup table. And it's right over here in my properties panel, right? Here it is. And then all I need to do is select... Oh look, they have crisp winter. Let's see what this looks like uh, with this crisp winter look, right? There it is, done. What about drop blues? That's pretty warm. This is gonna get more into the fall colors. But I think this is just a quick way to kind of see how your content uh, looks. Foggy night, that looks very wintry. Futuristic bleak, you get the idea. Horror blue. Wow, I'm getting kind of scary. Bleach bypass, you get the idea. Let's do crisp winter. <laughs> yeah, Icarus, Icarus Creative Studio. Jokes, you know what this deer needs? He needs a coat. <laughs> the deer needs a coat. Coats for animals, fundraiser, seventh annual, be there. Yeah, Cedric, so uh, I like lookup tables. You could actually create your own as well. So um, I'll just add that. And drop in my, this asset. Love Lutz. I love the Lutz too. You Lutz. All right. There we are, snowflakes. Oh man, Mike, you know my other shortcut that I've been using a lot is shift option, uh, oops, shift command, shift command, uh, opening and closing bracket. And that will move uh, the layers, this from the top to the bottom. Because I noticed with my other design, it just got too big. And I'm like, oh, just put this on top, boom. Okay, command shift, uh, closing bracket. Then I need to do just jump in here, change the layer mode just to kind of give this a nice look. So let's kind of go through this. Do you guys do this? Just kind of click through, like, okay, what's going to look good? Maybe like that, sure. I'm just trying to add a little bit of a texture just so it's not too boring. All right, you guys got the idea. Uh, this will be recorded, Angelo. You could watch it start to, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so you could watch it from the beginning. All right. Holiday puns for days. Um, I could start to stack different um, color lookup tables. Let's actually move that to the top. That actually looks pretty good. So I'll duplicate this one, right? So it obviously amps it up. Maybe I'm changing things around. And this is my life, by the way, is like doing crazy stuff that's probably going to like maybe look good or not look good. And I'll click on things and I'm like, no, I liked the original setting. Okay, so Mike, check this out. Like, I sometimes like turn on and off layers like so much <laughs> that I don't remember what, uh, you know, what layers were turned on, like what combo I had, especially when I have a lot of these. Yeah, this is my life. I'll show you files that are crazy. Right? Which is why I encourage you, pro tip, if you go into history options, right down here, set this. Say make layer visibility changes undoable. Okay? Undoable is a good thing. Okay? Which sounds scary. But all it means is it's changing the layer visibility. It's actually adding that to my history panel. Uh, you know, turning things on and off. So again, pro tip, again, I just like go back in and okay, what was that one? I could just click back and all those different layer visibilities that I was messing with could roll back through those. 
Okay, uh, Linda P. asks a question, and that's what we're here for. That's why this is live, guys. I could just, like, answer these questions kind of on the fly. Let's grab this, drop it in here, right? How do you move the pins around? Here's my fun little, little sprig. But here's this piece, okay? And uh, I will apply Puppet Warp to it. So edit puppet warp gives me uh, this mesh and I can turn on and off the mesh but in essence I just roll over it and then I can put a pin anywhere where the mesh is right just like that so that's how you add it as well so now I can make this like much longer without having to manipulate all those different lines and BZA points and stuff like that because I want it to kind of curve and be under the text maybe a little more. I think that looks a little better. Okay, I can obviously manipulate it that way. Check this out. I'm going to change this from normal to distort. You ready for this? Bloop. This is what distort does. Like, if you make something bigger or stretch it out, it just gets much larger. Zoop. Which is kind of fun, but I just like normal. Okay. Done and done. You can control the depth if things overlap. It's really awesome and powerful, and I'm glad you like it. Hit enter, and uh, that's our little sort of icon underneath there, like that. Cool. Uh, this is yeah. So we'll be live later. Uh, why is there an undo limit? Because uh, your computer has limits in terms of the amount of data that it can store. Um, so that's kind of where there's an undo limit. You could always change that in preferences, by the way. Uh, oh, since we're talking about, uh, yeah, like history log. No, that's not it. Here we go. Performance. How many history states do we have? I have it set to 50. Okay. Um, and then there's other things in here. So since I'm working on this file, these files that are so deep, so many layers, I'd actually want to change this to web and UI design, and that will change the cache level and um, uh, the tile size. If I'm doing photographic work, I'll change it that way. So this is just easy to work with. Uh, Chris, uh, Christina, yes, the quick uh, selection trick. So the focus area select will work on people, um, chances are you'll want to actually go into select and mask once that's done. So remember, I did focus area select to select this deer, and then I'd want to come up here and I'd hit select and mask, and from there I'd start to get all the little hairs using this fancy, fancy revi refine edge, right? So from here, and let me just change this view to on black, but this will allow me to, if I just roll over it, or paint over it, What am I doing? Okay, so it's computing, but it's picking up all those little hairs. So that's what you're going to use. You're going to use Refine Edge. See, I'm getting all those little hairs. It's like, oh, thank you very much, brush. You're getting all those little hairs. And uh, click OK, and that's good to go. Cool. Um, okay, so oh, I'm going to answer your question. Um, Donna, so uh, is the artboard, artboard tools getting in your way? Check this out. I'll go in here. I'll go to Edit Toolbar. I can take this artboard tool and I can drop it over here. Okay, so I can basically say, hey, get out of here, artboard tool. Hey, guess what? For this artboard tool, I'm going to disable that shortcut for these hidden toolbar extras. So that's how you do it. You should get rid of it. It's like, hey, it's still there. Pro tip as well, guys. You want to see something fun? Hold down Shift Command. Is that what it is? Click done, and it will uh, it'll add a little banana. That's a little Easter egg to your toolbar uh, option there. Okay, it is bananas, but there it is. So, yeah, that happened. Anyways, and it will <laughs> click done. Anyway. I should reset that. Let's not worry about it. Okay, so yeah, just throw away that tool and uh, 
you're not really throwing it away, but uh, that's how that works. All right, guys, I am over on time. Hopefully you like this card. Oh, dear, it's the holidays again. Let's take a look at our other one. Again, a different size. Uh, codes for animals. Hopefully you learned some things there. And obviously this, uh, this deer design that I might need to sort of roll back to the very beginning. Right. Oh yeah, let me show you one more thing with this. This is actually the final. Boop. Crazy. <laughs> uh, the banana is just for fun, right? Thank you, Cedric. You know about the toast and the coffee. It's another Easter egg, which is cool, but... So again, we've made three different uh, sort of holiday cards or invites. Um, the output's kind of going to depend on if you're doing print, this needs to be CMYK. Okay, if you're even going to, say, Facebook, obviously you'll need to have that at that size. So I've actually made my own templates for Facebook and other platforms because I just I have the dimensions. So I needed those uh, for this. So this is actually... Uh, an online, basically an image I'm using online for a little party that's coming up. All right. Puns for days, Michael. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I've gone too long. This this is obviously a recording or being recorded. It is on the YouTubes. Uh, happy holidays to you guys. Wherever it finds you, uh, I will uh, talk to you guys later and we'll probably see you guys soon online. And don't forget, you can catch me sort of on Twitter as I type that in. Uh, just because I'm trying to build a fan base. <laughs> hey, Helen. I might have. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate you all. Happy holidays. We'll see you guys soon. We'll be broadcasting here later. Maybe, ne actually, I think possibly on uh, maybe Monday. I'll have to double check the schedule. But uh, yeah, just make sure you have hit subscribed and subscribe, and you are, um, you know, have notifications turned on on your phone. So yeah, I hope to see you guys live someday as well. This is the easiest thing, easiest way to get from uh, Montreal to Slovenia, Slovakia, all that stuff. So Yunzi, appreciate you guys. Happy holidays, everybody. I am out. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Keep the questions coming because I'll just might be answering questions in the chat if you guys have more. Thanks, guys.